American Peter Kasich has been held by ISIS for more than a year. He adopted the first name of Abdul Rahman in captivity. In the latest ISIS execution video, the terror group threatens to kill him. Margaret Brennan spoke with Kasich's parents. They're going public with their effort to save him. Margaret, good morning. Good morning. Ed and Paula Kasig's son was kidnapped last October in eastern Syria. He is a 26-year-old American aid worker and now a practicing Muslim. Ten days ago, ISIS announced that they will kill him next. We're doing everything we can to secure his release. For most of the last year, Ed and Paula Kasig kept their son Peter's abduction a secret. An order from his captors, the terror group ISIS. We couldn't answer honestly when people would ask us. So we had to lie to our friends again and again and again. The recent murder of American journalist Stephen Sotloff, Kasig's cellmate at one point, prompted the Kasigs to make a public plea for help. The dynamics have changed now. Stephen's family kept the secrecy and he was executed. Peter's name has been listed. Their only son, Cassie, grew up in suburban Indiana, loving fishing and hiking. After serving briefly in Iraq, Cassie found his calling, delivering aid to Syrians brutalized by the Civil War. He always was a compassionate person, and this was just something he felt he needed to do. It was on one of those missions when he was taken. Ed Kasig was told the day it happened by a friend of Peter's in Syria. How did you find out that he had been captured? A phone call, and it was Peter's number. And I thought, oh man, I get to hear from Peter. And when I picked up the phone, I didn't recognize the voice. And the individual introduced himself. And uh, we learned that he had been detained. That was on October 1st, 2013. Once the video appeared showing their son being threatened by ISIS, Ed and Paula retreated to a hotel to avoid the media. Ed described his reaction one morning at breakfast when images of his son flashed across the TV. One minute, you look at your scrambled eggs and you look up, it's football. The next minute, you look at scrambled eggs, you look up, and there's your son. And you sit there and you have to watch everybody's jaw in the place drop. And then you got to fake it, too, because you don't want to stand there and look callous. And inside, you just wanted to scream, hey, that's my kid. We just ate it, went back upstairs. The Kassigs revealed for the first time that they received a horrifying audio recording of their son two weeks ago. He said his life was in jeopardy if U.S. airstrikes don't stop. It was just automatic, kind of toneless as though he was a robot. And I'm sure it's because they were insisting what he could say. Yeah, it was the first time you had heard his voice in yeah. a year. Yes. Over a year. Now the Kassigs are asking for mercy, appealing directly to ISIS through YouTube and Twitter messages. Have you felt that that's falling on any ears that are willing to listen? I don't know that it is, but I have to try because I need to know that I've done everything I can do. Have his captors asked for anything? No, no they way. demand. They simply demand. And their demands have always been ones that we cannot accommodate. It's just beyond what's reasonable in terms of money, in terms of your power? Right, in both cases, yes. And we have sent them back messages that we cannot do what you ask. We have tried, but we don't have the power to do it. Uh, Margaret, uh, the when and how uh, did Pete uh, change his name, and how did the parents find out? Well. There have been hostages who've been freed, and so some information has come out and been shared with the parents. But Ed and Paula are, uh, they think it's very important that the world knows that their son's journey towards Islam, as they say it, began before this. He had 
fasted for Ramadan. He had been learning about religion, but he didn't change his name from Peter to Abdurrahman until he was in captivity. But um, they want that to be known because they're hoping that ISIS won't kill a fellow Muslim. Right? That That is a hope. I mean, certainly ISIS has killed many, many Muslims, but they are trying to make the point, our son is an aid worker. That's what he's there to do. He's trying to help people. He's one of you. Um, and they hope that that message is received. I mean, that name, Abdurrahman, means servant of the merciful, and they mm. say that that's a very fitting name. And how is the U.S. government helping? It's not clear. Uh, the U.S. government has said that they are trying through the FBI, through the State Department, to do everything possible through diplomatic channels and others. But this choice to speak out was purely the parents. They decided they have to try to do everything they possibly can. Um, it's not clear whether their messages have actually been received. They said the conversation's very one-sided. They get emails that sort of disappear, they can't respond to. Um, but this was their choice. And, and this is very sensitive. And how many Americans are currently be, being held by ISIS? Um, well, there have been a handful that were held. We believe there are still two, including um, Abdurrahman. Okay. All right. Margaret, thank you. Thank you.